This is our best week yet. The weekly dividend ETF account is doing extremely, extremely well. You can see our account is now to $847.24, only up a dollar today, but the markets have been going crazy and this account has been following. We only have two losers. Last week, everything was in the red and now nearly everything is in the green and it's in the green big time. Like we're doing really well. Some of these are are just killing it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over a number of things with this video. I'm gonna cover all the weekly payers that we have. We're gonna go over the full breakdown on their chart, the last dividend that they paid, and then we're gonna throw up the spreadsheet where I've been converting all of this random mumbo jumbo into data, and we'll look at the differences in the percent return and everything from all of these funds, which is going to be super, super fun. I really appreciate you guys for being here. This challenge has brought in so many new subscribers, and I really, really appreciate it. If you are interested in seeing how these are gonna do and how the account that I'm putting up against these is going to do. I'm doing a non-weekly account to try and see if I can combat these weekly payers. Um, please hit like and subscribe. It helps me out. It helps the channel out a bunch and I really appreciate it. We're growing the community and you guys have been super, super amazing about that. So with all that being said, let's roll the intro. So our account is doing much better than last week. We can see our total cash is up to $79.90. I have uh, YMAG and YMAX are dripping now. So I'm still going to include all their dividends in the spreadsheet that I'm making, but then I'll actually uh, do that manually because it's not going to notify Moomoo every time. So I'll, I have to do that. Also, someone asked me to send them the spreadsheet. I will do that. I'm, I apologize. I keep waiting because I'm like, oh, I'll add more data, add more data, but I'll send that to you. Um, and if anyone else wants it in the comments, let me know. I can email it to you. Uh, but those are on drip now. The first one, YMAX did drip, YMAX didn't, but I did put the data into the spreadsheet already. And then we can see the other ones and how they've been performing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna reinvest into the Defiance ETFs. I'm gonna let them run their course. I'm not gonna sell them. And so I am taking a risk on losing, I don't know, $300. I don't think they'll go to zero by any means, but I'm not gonna put more money into them just because I, I don't like the performance that I'm seeing. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to just, I'll just trade off. So I'll buy another share of QDTE and then XDTE and then RDTE over and over and over again, every time I can. So we're gonna start off with, I'll buy a share of QDTE this week. And then actually we're almost right there to buy another share of, RD, of XDTE. So I might do that the following week if we get enough from those dividends and then so on and so forth. So if you guys like that, let me know in the comments. If you don't like that and you have a better idea, let me know as well. I'll wait and see what everyone thinks before I start doing anything too crazy. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into each individual position. So if you guys are new to this series, or new to the channel, we have three different companies that sell weekly ETFs. We have the Defiance ETFs, which is IWMY, QQQY, and WDTE, which used to be JEPY. They converted when they went to weeklies, they converted that one, the ticker. And then we have Roundhill, which is um, QDTE, XDTE, and RDTE, which are probably the most famous, I would say. Um, they have some huge assets under management. And then our last one is, is Yield Max, another one that has huge, huge AUM. We have YMAG and YMAX. They have been the top performers so far. So I'm curious to see how they hold up this week. And I'm anxious. I'm anxious to see how they do in the coming weeks because I've been really, really excited with this account, with everything it's been doing and with the feedback you guys have been giving me. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in and look at all of the charts for all of these. We're gonna look at the average cost versus the market value, the percentage gain loss. And then we're gonna go over those specific dividends and see how much money, the big thing, how much money these have actually made me in total dividends and in price return, because that's where it really makes a huge, huge difference. So let's go ahead and jump into the IWMY chart. Okay, so I have not been the biggest fan of IWMY. You guys probably know that my last video, I kind of torched it a little bit, but this last week is the first week it paid out a dividend, dropped all the way to 32.72, and then rose all the way to 34, now it paid its dividend and it's closing around the 3272 again. So what does this mean? It's been a really good week in the market. A um, little bit of back and forth just today. My, my stuff was down, but maybe not everybody's is down. Um, but one thing to note is uh, if it can continue to do this, this would be great. They currently are boasting a 108% dividend yield, which I think the website says about 50 something, which is a lot more realistic, but still not very realistic without some nav erosion but I am very excited. I think that this was a big week for this. And if the market continues to trend upward, this one might be one that I even look into reinvesting into, but let's not get ahead of ourselves just because this week in the market was 
totally crazy. We haven't seen a lot of change in volume down here, you guys can see. But then going over the dividends, we had 42 cents, 35, 31, 31 and a half, and now 32, almost 33, closer to 33. So a big jump in the dividend as well. I like seeing that. I don't like seeing the dividends trailing downward. And so since this split, it has been on a downward, downward spiral, but I think that there is a really good chance that it can just start trading sideways. It's getting its footings a little bit, and hopefully it can continue. The AUM is still at 125, almost 126, which is good. That's assets under management, and that's 126 million for those of you that are that are new. And that's the basically the amount of money the fund is operating with. So that's how much the managers are using to write their cash secured puts. I said it better that time. So IWMY, a surprisingly good week. Let's see if the other ones held up just as good. I forgot to point out that IWMY is down 2%. Uh, average cost of $34.61 and a current price of $33.91. Not terrible, but 2% is a bit of a bummer. It was down like 4 or 5% on last week's update, so I'm glad that it is climbing back up. Uh, but QQQY, better position. We're only down 0.92%. And so that is much better than last week. We can see our purchase price of 3437 and a current price of about 3405. So nothing terrible there. I've switched it back away from the candles. Um, but we can see our buy point right here at 34. And so it hasn't re-reached that point. We bought right after the dividend paid out and it came back up a little bit, but again has trailed off. Now it still hasn't reached, it went all the way down to 33.1 after the last dividend and it climbed quite a bit we haven't seen a crazy drop yet from this dividend but i'm wondering if we will um, we can also see down here their last four dividends 27 and a half cents 27 and a half cents um 27 uh, 25.5 cents and then 26.6 cents so we climbed up from last week by a little bit nothing too crazy i want to see these continuing to trade relatively sideways and keep putting out that crazy yield the yield currently they have it as 83%, which is insane. An AUM of 195 million. I think this is the largest fund. This is QQQI is the largest of the defiance funds, um, but still a really rough chart here. Ever since the uh, split or reverse split, it has just been trailing downward. So I need to see it collect a little more, make some more sense. I want it to go back to our buy price and just kind of sit there and trade sideways. And then I'd see it being of more value. But until it does that, I'm going to be more antsy with ever thinking about putting drip on for this one. I'm just holding it to see exactly what it does, mostly for you guys. So I hope you guys do enjoy that. Now let's go to their newest or the, or the one with the ticker change, WDTE. The only one in the green of our defiance funds, that is the S&P 500 uh, WDTE, which is only up 0.3%. But our average cost is 42.18 and the current price is 42.30. So it's a win. You can't, can't deny it. It's a win. And so this one, a very, very similar chart to um, QQQY, much lower assets under management at about 90 million and a lower yield even at about 51.5. A lot less movement going on with these ones in the, in the recent couple of weeks, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a lot of selling either. It's just going a little flat with the volume. The last four dividends, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents. And the last one was 28, almost 29 cents. So we did see a nice jump. And look at this. So this sold. So the dividend payout, it was at 41.90. And we are back. We're at 41.85. So we have seen this one climb all the way back, which is what we want to see these funds do. And so I am happy with that. I think this one has been performing well. Maybe it's a bit of a risk. I mean, it definitely is a risk. It might be the riskiest because it is the lowest AUM. But I'm curious what you guys think between all the Defiance ETFs. Are you holding any of these? Because I know that IWMY is probably the fan favorite of these, but only time will tell. So let's jump into those Yield Max ETFs. Both our Yield Max funds are continuing to put out money. Looking at YMAX first, again, Drip is not on for this one, but we can see market value is $90.50. We are up $2.65, a 3% return. Our average cost is $17.57, and our current price is $18.10. So if you guys are thinking about purchasing any of these, there are times to buy. Uh, that's what this has showed so far. Even the yield max funds were down last week, took a huge, huge dip, and now we're back up really significantly. So I'm happy to see it. So we paid the dividend, it dropped like crazy, and it rose and far surpassed where it was, over 50 cents from even before the dividend, which I think is phenomenal. We are green on this one, and we've seen an insane amount of volume here. Let me pull this down just a 
we've seen a lot of green volume. A lot of people are buying into this just because these last couple, I mean, this last week, last couple of days have been really good for this one. Like I said, the AUM for these are massive, 377 million assets under management, and we can see a dividend yield of 33.4%. Now, people are, are I, don't, I don't think there's an argument, there's a debate going on between YMAG versus YMAX. I prefer YMAG. A lot of people on my video where I ranked all of these weekly payers said YMAX over YMAG because it is more diverse. Now, the question is, is what do you want it to be in divested in? Um, so I like it to be, I should have said invested. I like it to be invested in not Bitcoin necessarily. I have crypto in a separate thing. So I like to keep my stocks in crypto separate. And so it makes me a little bit nervous. I think YMAX holds a little bit more um, Bitcoin assets versus YMAG. That's just the Magnificent 7. But it's been performing. YMAX has been doing phenomenally well. And I am debating putting this one in my normal account. So we can see last four dividends, 1750 sorry, 17.5 cents, um, 22.7 cents, 22.5 cents, and a lower 11, almost 12 cents. So the reason sometimes these ones have drastic drops. And so don't be surprised by that. It's because of how the rotation is for the underlying funds. So this one for yield max is the fund of funds. So it owns a lot of the yield max ETFs. And now that being said, this one probably rose because of crypto actually, because if you didn't know Bitcoin hit all time highs last week, or this week, recently anyway, because the market never closes. Um, but I definitely just lost my train of thought. Crypto has been doing absolutely insane. So because this one, I remember where I was, because it holds more funds, it is definitely more diverse, but the payouts are kind of awkward. Sometimes you'll get a lower week just because like there's a, a lot of funds in these and they don't, they pay out monthly, but this is rotated to hold certain amounts so it pays weekly. So it's going to pay you every week, but not all of the underlying funds pay every week. So it has to rotate them in. And if they're holding a, a weird number, it, it, they just, you can't get it perfect. So, and that's how someone explained it in the comments, which was phenomenal. And I appreciate it. But all in all, YMAX has been doing well. I'm very happy with not only the chart, because it looks like a normal stock chart. Like, yes, it was trailing off like crazy. And then everyone started buying it. But the dividends have been great. And I think we're higher than it ever was even before it went weekly. We are. We are at all-time highs since going weekly, which I think is great. So let's go to YMAG, the sister fund, and see how that one is doing. YMAG is doing amazing. We're up 4.36%. Total P&L is $4.22. We can see that is... We're dripping on this one too. So we now have 5.05 5 cents. Woohoo. Huge purchase there. But our average cost was $19.17, and it's now sitting at 20 exactly, um, at least the last time this was updated. So YMAG doing really well. I'm happy. I like this one. You guys know that I like this one, and we can see a similar chart to YMAX, which I do like. So it's, it's run up. We have another buy because we reinvested, unfortunately, right at the top, and it did come down a little bit, but we're still in the green because we did buy significantly more prior to that. So healthy chart, we can see AUM of 193 million and a dividend yield of 31.5. The yields have been good. The dividends have been very good. And we can see down here, uh, the buying power has been really good as well. So last four dividends, 22.6 share uh, cents. And then we have the low one at five cents because of the rotation of the funds in it. Don't forget that, that's why. And then we can see a low 15 cent. That one was a bit of a bummer. I wanted it to bounce back a little bit, but it didn't have a good week. And now 20 and a half cents. So no complaints. The dividend has bumped back up. I'm really happy about that. And the, the fund is looking healthy. Again, we're at all time high since going weekly and even a little bit before that. And so yield max might be the winners of this account. I was expecting XDTE or QDTE, um, but yield max is outperforming them for the most part. But there is a sneaky one coming up that I don't think a lot of people thought would do as well as it's doing. So let's go ahead and jump into those round hill ETFs. And here it is, RDTE, the Round Hill Small Cap, which is investing on the Russell 2000, is up 5.37%. Our overall winner in the account for this week, IWMY was a loser, no surprise there. We are up $4.74 with this one, which I think is just crazy. Um, I'm very happy about that. We had a average cost of 44.17 cents. Um, $44 and 17 cents and 46 54 is our current price. So we are up quite a bit. No complaints. Now this one is a lot newer as well as a fund. So we are at all time highs, which is crazy. We, man, I should have bought more of this one. I didn't know it was going to run. You guys should have told me. 
Um, but I'm happy with this one. Great return. Still very low in the AUM, which is 86 million and a low dividend yield just because it's not fully calculated yet. Last time I ran it, it was about 40%, pretty close to the other Round Hill funds. Now, my thing with, with RDTE is because it's so low AUM, there is some chance for this thing to do really well. If this one starts outperforming both, you know, all of the defiance ETFs, I don't know why people would hold those over this if it is going to continue to move upwards and to pay out a higher yield um, and have less nav erosion or no nav erosion at all. So I'm curious. I'm curious to see how it performs. And I think it is higher risk, higher reward when it comes to the round hill funds. But looking at the last four dividends, we see a 30.5 cents, a 33.5 cents, 25.6 cents, and 26.3 cents. So not terrible. We did move up a little bit since the last dividend. Um, nothing really to complain about. The price is up. The dividend's up. All things are going good and looking good for our DTE. Let's go over to the other very, very popular XDTE. So XDTE did surprise me a little bit. The way everyone's been talking about these, XDTE should have better price movement and QDTE should have better dividends. But all in all, we've seen better price movement from QDTE than XDTE. But nonetheless, we are still up. We also have a lot more XDTE than QDTE. So we can see average cost of 52.31 and a current price of 53.8. We have two shares. So looking at the chart again, are we at all time highs? We are at are we at all time highs? We are at all time highs, which is insane. Insane. And we're just below it too. So the, obviously these are doing good. We've seen a lot more influx of money. You guys can see people are buying and buying and buying, especially more recently, which I like to see. And uh, moving over to the AUM, 2.13 million and a current dividend yield of about 15%, 14.5%. Very solid. Very, very solid last four dividends of 21.7 cents, 23.9 cents, 15.5 cents, and 21.4 cents. So I'm happy with XDTE. Um, I see why people like this one. I see why the Roundhill funds do so well because they have been performing. And I am, I'm impressed by their performance so far. Let's go over to our last ETF to look at and probably the most popular. It has the most viral video on my account, on my channel so far, QDTE. It is up 3.24% with a total PL of $2.74 QDTE, our average cost of $43.33, and a current price of $43.70. So really, really good return, especially since last week it was down. So these ones that are all up 5, 4, 3%, these were all negative. So these are you're looking at 5 to 6% returns. My cat is going crazy. You're looking at 5 to 6 to 7% returns in the last week, which is crazy. Now, what surprised me with QDTE is we're nowhere near all-time highs. All-time highs are closer to the uh, $46 range. We're still $3 off. And so not doing as well as QD, as um, XDTE, but still pretty solid run here that we've seen. We see a huge, huge AUM of $536 million. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money and a huge dividend yield. Of 23%. So you're looking at what 8% higher yield than XDTE with this one. And so I'm curious, this one is doing better in the account, but maybe it won't for long. Um, but still very, very happy with the performance of this one. And we can see that our dividends, uh, we had last four, we had 31.8 cents, we had 20.8 cents, we had 20.4 cents, and we had 26.5 cents. So really, really solid. Um, 26.5, we're up quite a bit. Um, except for the dividend three dividends ago, but the last two were lower. And so we've jumped a bit. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move into the spreadsheet that I have and just, we're going to nerd out. All right. I'm going to call it what it is. We're going to go over. We're finance people. We love this. Um, we're going to go over all the data. We're going to look at the percent return for each of these, the total dividends we've gotten from the account so far. And then we're also going to look at the dividends that were paid from each individual fund compile all this together. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's go right over into it. All right. I have already plugged in all of the data. Now I'm plugging it in the day I basically do the spreadsheet. So the dates aren't accurate as to when they're received. Um, so just remember that, but we can see some pretty solid dividend returns. So remember, this is the ticker and the number of shares that I have in the account. My cat wants to chime in. 
So we can see IWMY increase the dividend from the last two. We're up to 99 cents. We can see QQQY 80 cents, which is good. Another increase, but not, not a huge increase. We're still much, much lower than they had been in the past. WDTE, a really good increase of 7 cents compared to the last two. Not close to that first one again, but we got to take what we can get, right? QDTE, 53 cents. A nice jump closer to the mid-range of what we've been seeing. XDTE, 43 cents. Really solid. Again, more midstream. Crazy jump from the 31 cents. That was a really low week last week. And then we have RDTE at 53 cents, running around average of where it's been paying out. Now, YMAG, we had a dollar three, which is again in the middle of the pack. Not an insane return, uh, but it's a huge jump from the 76 cents. And then we had YMAX at only 60 cents. I'm not sure why this one. Um, was a little bit spotty. I know it's because of how they are rotating and stuff, but I need to look more into that and get the actual accounts and see what paid this time, what paid last time, but it's a lot of work. And so I'll be honest, I'm just being a little bit lazy. And so we can see um, it is lower than it has been. It's about half, but I'm sure that next week it'll be right back up there. We did see a drop prior uh, about three weeks ago, but still this one is a little bit lower than even that one. So what we can do now is we're going to add all of these up. So I'm gonna do this, we'll go to home and we'll go to auto sum. And now that has given us $5.48, which is not our highest, but not our lowest, middle of the pack, like I was saying. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add all of these up. Sure. And we see that we have a return of 32.45, which is phenomenal. We've had $32.45 paid out in dividends. Amazing. And what? We're on week one, two, three. We're on week six. So I'm very, very happy with this. We have seen $32.5, what, $5 a week? No complaints there. A little more than $5 a week. So what can you buy every week? A coffee, if you get cheap coffee places. Um, and all you need is $800 invested. So really, really solid. But imagine coffee for life. Coffee every day for life. Um, sorry, coffee once a week for life. Anyways, um, I'm very happy with this return. Now what we'll do, we can see the big jump in price appreciation. We saw it fall. It fell to 811 from 819 the prior week. And now we are back up, uh, up $34, which is crazy. And only what? So that'd be a $29 increase in price return because we had 550 in dividends. So a lot of price action this last this last week. And so now what I'm going to do, let, let's add up each of the dividends that were paid out from each fund. And so we're going to drag this down. This will calculate everything. And so we can see the dividends paid out now. IWMY with $5.16. QQQY with $4.25. WDTE really low with $2.75. But it, we only have two shares of that one. We have QDTE with $2.98. XDTE with $2.51, RDTE with $33.60, YMAG with $5.42, and YMAX with $5.78. So we are closer. We did have a good $5 last time uh, for YMAX, but this low dividend, I thought we might get it over the six, but not quite yet. All in all, not bad. Not bad. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add our dividends do a bunch of math off camera so you guys can actually see it, just the return, and then I'll be right back. Okay, we've made our way down here. I've done a little bit of math. So I took all of the dividends that were paid out. We're combining them to the current value. Now, the only thing that's different now is YMAG, which the dividend was already included in our current value. I removed that one. So I'm gonna keep having to do that, which is okay. I just have to remember to do it, especially with these ones, because drip is already on. So the value of the dividend was already reinvested into the total amount. So I'll continue to have to add probably the same number, but that's not too bad. So we have our values. And so I'm gonna go equals, and we're gonna do this number to minus our initial value, hit enter and pull this down. Now we can see our total return for each of these and our winner again is YMAG at $9.63. A huge return from YMAX as well with $8.48 and right behind it RDTE because it had a phenomenal week at $8.34 and a pretty big jump. This one is $3 ahead of the other Round Hill funds. So maybe it'll be more bouncy. It'll go up and down more. And we have our big losers, WDTE, terrible return so far. Um, we have 
QQQY and IWMY. So these are all, I mean, they're, the Defiance ETFs are doing what we expected. They're not paying as well. They're not doing as well. And the problem is, is this is just the total math of what we've gained and lost. We're going to do our percentage in just a second and calculate the total percent return because remember, some of these funds have a full $100 in them and some only have like 85. So that makes a huge, huge difference. But total funds wise, we've seen a good amount of return from the YMAG, from YMAX, and now RDTE snuck its way in there too. All right, I did a bunch more math. And so we have our percentages here. I got the percentage and then I multiplied it by 100. Um, no, I did that in the other order. I got the number multiplied it by 100 to make a percentage. And so we see our crazy winner of YMAG at 10% gain with dividends reinvested, which is with dividends paid out, I should say, which is crazy. And then we have YMAX right below 9.65%. We have RDTE, again, a really surprised one for me with 9.44%. Crazy good week for that one. Definitely the best week last week for any of these funds. Our RDTE really did well. Q, Q, uh, QDTE, really good with a seven a 6.75% return. Now we're getting down to the meds. We have XDTE with a 4.86% return. Again, not terrible. And then, wow, WDTE, 2.5% return. IWMY, 2.6. And QQQY, 3.2. So the Defiance Fund's far underperforming the rest. XDTE, not great. Uh, but QDTE has been good. RDTE has been phenomenal. And the Yield Max Funds have just been amazing 